Okay, so now we have Alfred Neumeyer, who is going to be talking to us um, about um, UB ports. Uh, after years of development under the guidance of the community, we're thrilled to see the fruits of our label, our labor come to fruition. From a maturing platform to apps that showcase the possibilities of the touch first, convergent platform that we like. Apps for accessing your music, connecting with your friends and family, and working on software projects in VMs. We have tools to accomplish the goals from the platform to the apps, all powered by a strong community and your help will be appreciated as well. We would like to welcome you to the continuing journey of a free and open OS for phones and tablets. So, floor's all yours. Thank you, thank you. So, I wanted to start out with this little anal analogy here with, oh, where it is? Uh, with this one, specifically. I'm going to jump back to the agenda real quick, but. Do, does anyone in here remember the code names of the BQ devices that shipped with Ubuntu Touch pre-installed? Does anyone remember them? Perfect. They were themed after uh, characters from Dragon Ball. So we have Goku in the middle, who is the father of Gohan on the right. And Piccolo has to take care of Gohan uh, for some time during Goku being in the afterlife. And Goku comes back and he sees how strong Gohan has become. It's, he's all, almost, he's becoming majestic almost. So I wanted to say this as a little uh, analogy here. I do think we have taken over something that was strong already or had a lot of potential, has become a success in the community, and we are going to take it further. That's the goal. That's the goal. So, overview. Uh, I'm going to show you a little overview about the state of the platform and the ways that we have improved it. I'm going to talk a little bit about porting and the way that you can get Ubuntu Touch on your phones or tablets yourself, uh, should they not be supported. App development and also if you are interested in working and helping us improve this thing, uh, platform development too, because we have a handful of tools uh, that you can use to oh, help us. Actually, I found out this rhymes with shoes. So, um, yeah, state of the platform. We started with 1504, right? Um, when we took it over. We slowly migrated it over to 1604, and now we're in the process of bringing it to focal, meaning that uh, we have to do a little bit of extra work, making sure that the upstart dependencies that were in Ubuntu Touch from the start that those are slowly migrated over to ways that are more similar to a system D or more familiar to a system D environment. Uh, and actually, thanks to Luca for helping us uh, from PostMarketer specifically, uh, because he has done an amazing job at making sure that the applications run, run, for example, on system D, right? On system D-based systems. And the next goal would be to make sure that the platform can be easily transitioned over to the next versions as soon as they are released, rebasing qu quickly. We go through a lot of pain right now, redesigning a few things, but most of the things that you are familiar with, as some people in the audience might have worked on a project or have used it or ported something themselves, um, I'm going to show you a little uh, a different slide later on. Um, so, Harvard Partners, we gained actually a handful of new hardware partners. So Vola, Pine64, and Shift have all either released something with Ubuntu Touch pre-installed or plan to do so. And as a very important partner as well, that is Fairphone, that is also part of the plan. Uh, they really would like to ensure that Ubuntu Touch works very nicely on their Fairphone 4, which is a beast of a hardware, and it actually supports uh, video out. So you can get into the conversion setup that we all dreamed of years ago with the phone only, right? So, and we've also upgraded some middleware pieces. So, for example, the Qt upgrade, this took some time. Uh, thanks to Rodney for that. Um, we also added a few different backends to support newer sensors and including NFC. 
and make sure that we could reuse as many components from Sailfish OS as possible so that we don't have the burden of maintaining this thing ourselves completely. Um, so the goals. What are the goals? We still want to provide what this project started out with, right? With the idea that this is an operating system for, for average Joe users that just works, right? So we still want to provide that. We do this on a technical level. We do this with the focus on the user experience. Of course, the idea that the operating system works on both phones, tablets, and desktop, uh, and the idea that we have bulletproof updates of both the OS and the applications, which is not so, it's, it's, I'm going to come to traditional uh, Linux just in a second, uh, but this all ties in with the security that we want to provide for our users. And I'm specifically mentioning security rather than privacy right now compared to my colleagues, right? Because in my mind, the, in the mind of many people actually, the, the privacy aspect is directly is, an, is an, a side effect of the security story that we have. So just because we want to focus on privacy doesn't necessarily mean we provide good privacy. We have to prove it, right? And we do that by providing, by only allowing um, promoted devices that actually support App Armor very well, that work with the security frameworks that are in place, that have been put in place for years now. Um, it's sort of like, it's a stupid anal analogy, maybe, but it is sort of like the superhero Hancock saving a child on his way to the next liquor store. And in that sense, we just happen to do it right. So we don't necessarily focus on privacy in all areas, but we do provide privacy by default. We just happen to do it, right? So it's not the, it's not the end goal. It is a very important goal, but it's just that. Um, again, thanks to Rodney for allowing me to use this little quote of his. Ubuntu Touch is not a traditional PC Linux distribution and phones aren't traditional PCs. There are many people coming over to Ubuntu Touch expecting to be able to use apt. Docker. Use their phones for tasks that are not specifically tied to a phone use case. And for those people, we can't help them and we can't provide what they want. For those p types of use cases, Droidian or post-market OS might be a better fit uh, because Ubuntu Touch is more geared towards the goal of or the, the idea of having a phone that just works and apt by itself um, doesn't provide what Ubuntu Touch wants to, wants to do here. So, also another very key thing about Ubuntu Touch, it always answered the question, what is the OS and what is an app? Because the applications are small. It's like 500 kilobytes for a click package that you download off the open store uh, or the, the old store that uh, Canonical uh, had, had set up. We have a read-only file system and separation of user data. So we do selectively make paths writable that are slash in slash Etsy, in slash varlib, something, and slash opt. Uh, those types of things, they usually are, they would be affected by the read-only system. But in this case, they just um, become writable by moving those things over to the user data partition of the phone. Uh, which is read-writable. So, apps might ship their own dependencies just as much as Docker or, or Snaps do. Uh, they don't necessarily, they are not totally encouraged to do so, but if that's the only way to do it, go ahead and do it. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm going to mention a little project right now, and that is because of this, I managed to ship a QEMU instance inside of a click package for a virtual machine manager on Ubuntu Touch. <laughs> yes, we do have a virtual machine manager on Ubuntu Touch. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense on a phone. This is the most ridiculous idea I came up with, but it does work very well on a, in a conversion tablet setup using KVM. So you can actually virtualize this thing, run OpenGL hardware accelerated virtual machines on your Ubuntu Touch tablets. If anyone is interested in seeing that uh, themselves, I have a tablet with me, I just need to recharge it, and you can play around with it for a short while. 
All right, so app lifecycle, power reduction. Uh, this is very important because we suspend the applications while they're not in use in the background. Uh, Liberty containers provide what kind of desktop-like functionality you expect from apt, because it basically is just a truth or a container, depending on the setup, that allows you to use apt. And for those that think they want to switch over, which we would totally welcome, but they are necessarily bound to a few Android applications, you can also use Waydroid as a solution to bring your WhatsApp and your uh, Maps applications that you're used to over to your Ubuntu touch phone. Uh, Waydroid is actually, and because of the gaming talk earlier, um, Waydroid is performant enough to run Goat Simulator on the phone, right? Uh, so it is highly performant. It does hardware acceleration. It works perfectly. Um, so, boarding. Assuming you got a little bit interested in getting in touch with Ubuntu Touch, um, you can actually port the phone should it not be already supported by the installer that we provide. So we do have the Ubi Ports installer. You, ins you select your phone or tablet. You install the image onto it. You have sometimes you have to follow some pre um, preparatory steps to make it 100% uh, work. But in case this is not true, then you can go ahead and point it yourself. Now, how does this look like? What does it look like? We have two solutions here. First of all, for Halium-based devices, which are basically Android devices that ship with Android pre-installed, we have the Android vendor kernel and the services uh, that make use of the hardware, that make allow the use of the hardware uh, in, a Lex in a Lexi container. And we do support versions from 7.1 to 11 at the moment. There are still some remaining pieces of the 5.1 uh, era around and the 4.4 era, but we can't support everything under the sun in that sense. So this is the way to, to go. You get a phone or tablet that is 7.1 Android or Android 11 based, uh, something in between that counts as well. And you can make sure that Ubuntu Touch and similar distributions work perfectly on it. The second approach would be a mainline-based device, and we only have a handful of examples with mainlining right now in the phone space, in the Linux phone space. The most prominent one is the PinePhone, probably, I would guess. Um, the PinePhone we do have support for, sadly, because of uh, life going on and people having to spend their time on other things. Uh, the Pine Phone image right now is not in the best shape. So if you own one and you want to help us out with something and you really enjoy the idea of having a mainline phone with Ubuntu Touch running, please go ahead and get in touch with us. Um, I'm more than happy to, to guide you through the steps on how to join us. And also for the Pine Phone, there are some additional patches necessary simply because of the hardware enablement, also because of the fact that we use App Armor, which is not necessarily default in, you know, in the upstream mainline Linux kernel, but it's there and it works pretty well. It still needs a few tweaks um, for the old user land that we're still running, but we plan to improve that over time. So, this is what the Halium side looks like. So we have a uh, little LibHybris thing. Now, what is LibHybris? It is basically, and this has been uh, started by Karsten Monk, which is the Android uh, runtime library loader, for lack of a better word, built on the glibc side, which allows you to load libraries that are built for Bionic on Android. So you can actually load libraries that are built for Android only in, and load them into the glibc-based process. Um, we have uh, this, the truth or the Lexi container running in the background, some services do still require uh, the compatibility layer, and this is the graph, the graphic that many people might still be afraid of and still haunts them to this day in their sleep. Does so for me as well, <laughs> at least. Um, because we are certainly changing up a few things in this little uh, graphic here. For example, the platform API, this yellow thing at the right side, the platform API is going to go away slowly. Um, I'm not sure if that's the plan for 2004, but certainly it is for 2204 at, at least. Um, 
But as you see, there are certain components that need to talk to each other. And the OMX, the camera, the radio interface on the Android side can be accessed through LibHybris and through the LibHybris compatibility layers that we have. And I'm saying we as if we invented it. No, of course not, but it's the raw, it's the, like we all share the idea of Ubuntu, working on Ubuntu Touch in some, in some sense here. Um, as you see, it's Ubuntu 14.04 at the bottom, and uh, the, gr the idea still hasn't changed much, but what is going to change is the removal of the platform API. And Qt Ubuntu probably also, because we are, not, we are slowly migrating over to a Wayland-only system, uh, where the, product, the main protocol to support is Wayland. We, st we still have, with the 2004 effort, we do a little split here. We run with Mir 1.8 currently, including some custom patches that we put on top for the phone use case. And we do a split between Mir client for the old legacy devices and legacy applications, and Wayland support for those applications that don't necessarily need deep integration into the operating system. So um, trust prompts, for example, they only work with Mir client as, a, as at, at the moment. We would like to see patches uh, pop up, and we would like to get in touch uh, to fix this situation ASAP, but it's not there yet. Um, and app development. So assuming you have your pretty um, Ubuntu Touch phone running perfectly fine, high po highly performant, and now you want to write some applications for it. How do you go about that situation. So mainly we use Qt and C++ for the applications. That's the main thing we support. That's has, that hasn't changed. Um, but there are also with the clickable tool that um, allows you to create projects. It also has templates for Rust, Go, uh, Python possibly, and other, th other languages might fit in there as well, uh, assuming someone does uh, propose templates for them. We can also make use of SDL2 with a few additional patches, as well as GTK3, again, with a few additional patches. And they're not in the archive, in the U-Ports archive, but you need to vendor them in into your click package right uh, at this moment. If you don't want to pack it, I mean, I mean, what would be the ideal situation to, to showcase this, and that is actually my empty tablet running v Visual Studio Codium, uh, VS Codium. Um, either on the Wayland only side or on the mere client only side, because this Electron app also uses GTK for some dialogues, right? So, Halium 7.1 is mere client only. Everything below that is mere client only. But everything above that supports Wayland, and we really want to take advantage of that. So, what do we do in app development specifically? Why is app development so specific to Ubuntu Touch in a deep sense? Uh, how does it differentiate itself from the desktop? Well, there are boundaries. They, everything runs in a sandbox, similar to the Snap use case, but also similar to other contemporary operating systems for mobile phones and ta tablets. Um, this leads us to preserve battery life very easily. It makes things more manageable because we don't let the Wild West situation go out of hand. You can manage your phone to a certain degree, even though you shouldn't have to, but it is very power efficient by default. That's the goal, right? Some phones don't necessarily uh, live up to that expectation, but it's based on the, it's, it's a lot of components working together. The port, the applications, the platform, they all need to work pretty well together. So. Um, this is the reason why I actually wanted to showcase how every layer works and how to get started because it is very rewarding just seeing your own phone with your own port, with your own applications running on top and it all just working, right? It's a very fulfilling f uh, experience. Um, everything outside of the boundaries that we set up or that Ubuntu Touch as a whole has set up is considerably insecure uh, to the point where they need to be open source to be released on the open store. They need to be manually reviewed. And they also need to uh, make sure that they're buildable by the reviewing team in the open store group. So those who are um, 
those are responsible for releasing those unconfined applications, they need to be able to build it themselves first. If they don't, they don't they don't they won't be they won't pass, right? So in case you want to write an application that is not possible yet, please submit patches to the OS. For example, there is one idea that popped up for USB access. Um, for access from applications to USB devices, in case you want to connect some health monitoring system to a tablet or whatever. How would you do that in a secure manner? And that implies showing up a pop-up again, the trust prompt. Would the, app, would the user actually allow this application XYZ to access USB? And yeah, that's one way to go about things. Please send us patches if you feel your application can't be released on Ubuntu Touch. And we certainly would like to see the, the platform itself growing capabilities as well, so that we can make use of it as well. And platform development. So, keeping it short, uh, we have two tools uh, that you can use to help us build the platform. There's first of all CrossBuilder. Uh, it uses LexD containers, so um, it works for both focal and it does change a few things in the Debian packaging just a tiny little bit uh, so that it can work with cross-building situations should the package at hand not natively support that. Um, if it breaks, it doesn't work well, we can't do much about it for that. We have the platform development kit. And that is specifically because I myself got a Mac with an M1 chip solely for the purpose of building ARM packages more quickly and even those that can't be cross-compiled, right? So there is a VM that you can build and test your stuff with, the, the packages with. There are even some uh, simple UbiPorts clone and UbiPorts uh, build commands that take the, the burden off of you of n having to know too deep information or too deep knowledge around Debian packaging. So the Debian packaging most of the time is already provided by us. You just pull it, you do your changes, and you can build it without knowing too much about it. It would be certainly helpful to know a little bit about Debian packaging in the long run, right? And it works only with focal and probably with things going forward, right? Um, so, assuming you're interested, just a handful of little components that we're uh, basing our stuff on, that we continue using, that is, for example, for the display uh, and for the application buffer passing support, that is MIR. Uh, MIR is a display server library compatible to Wayland, if you still don't know. And it used to be MIR client. We, we do the split. We do both. Uh, MIR Android platform allows to drive the graphics using Android drivers, and they can be customized using configurations uh, that we put in overlay files that you can just ship with the, with the phone as a porter, right? Qt MIR integrates the whole thing into QML scene graph so that it renders perfectly fine, uh, so that whatever Mir gives us as a surface is just shown on the screen. And it provides the QML APIs to have Lumiri, which is Unity 8, reborn, right? Or just renamed. Um, it's written in QML and C++. And just think of QML as being this language that you can use to instantiate C++ objects with. And then you just connect them via signals and slots, and that's it. There's no need for, Java, for JavaScript at all, but you can make use of it. Um, media Hub allows to suspend media applications like the music player and uh, runs, runs media in the background. It's been partially rewritten in Qt, so, or fully rewritten in Qt by now. And same for Qt, Ubuntu Camera, and RepowerD. Those are very important platform uh, packages as well. RepowerD does power management, auto suspend, and manages a, a similar concept to Android's weight locks, um, so that the phone does not suspend while it's supposed to synchronize all the contacts in the background, for example, so that it doesn't just stop abruptly. Uh, Qt Ubuntu Camera in integrates the Android camera stack into Qt so that you can record video, uh, take pictures. We have a zero copy viewfinder because it's just passing on uh, OpenGL textures, um, but we also do have 
readouts. We, we are going to have readouts of the viewfinder for QR codes soon. And the goal is to integrate a QR code reader either in the camera application or ship it next to the camera application in the long run um, to make it highly performant and not be too slow for the older phones. And the last one, Trust Store. Uh, interactive permission system used for microphone camera location. You have to press OK for it to be supported, uh, for, for it to be allowed for the application. And should you be interested in web applications or having a great browser uh, support on Ubuntu Touch, Qt Web Engine is the one that we are currently using. And we're slowly regaining feature parity with aux sites that used to ship back in the day. Um, the only missing piece is hardware-supported video decoding, but that's about it. So thank, thank you for listening to the talk. And if you have any questions, I'm available outside. So yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Great timing. Thank you so much, Alfred.